Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve a quadratic equation uh, by, you, by factoring out the GCF. So um, <clears throat> basically in this one, when we factor out the GCF, what we're looking into is looking for what is a common factor between our two terms. Then we're going to divide that out, apply the zero product property, and then solve. So remember, when we're looking into solving quadratics, one of the major important things, unless um, when we have two variables, we just can't simply isolate the variable. We have to go ahead and factor to, to rewrite the um, equation as a product of two um, quantities equal to 0. So first thing we want to do is make sure that our equation is set equal to 0. So you can see when we have examples of it not equaling 0, I guess that's my only one, when we have it not equal to 0, we want to make sure we get every, all the terms on the same side set equal to 0. So in this case, we have that. Now the next thing we want to do is factor out its common terms. So you can see between x squared and x, what do they have, what do they share in common? What can we divide out that's exactly the same out of both of them? Well, you can see you can divide an x into an x squared, right? And you can divide an x into x. So therefore, x is my common factor. So when I divide out an x, I'm left with x plus 1. And you can always check your answer. When factoring, when factoring out the GCF, you, or factoring just in general, when you rewrite an expression as a product, you can always check your answer by multiplying it back out. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is x. So it works. So now I have the product of two, term, of two ex expressions equal to 0. So therefore, by applying the zero product property, I can set them both equal to 0 to solve. Well, I have x is equal to 0. That's done. And then I subtract 1 here, and I have x is equal to negative 1. So therefore, my solution set for this one is 0, negative 1. Done. Oops, that needs an x. OK, uh, for the next example here, I have x squared minus 56x equals 0. And again, we look at this, we have a number, so we say, all right, you know, what can we factor out? Um, however, this does not, you know, has a number of 1. So the common factor is 1, right? 1 and 56, the only number that divides into 1 and 56 is 1. So factoring out a 1 is really not going to help us. However, we both understand that they have an x, an x squared, and an x, so therefore I can factor out an x. So by factoring out an x in this case, I'm now left with an x minus 56. Again, x times x is x squared. x times negative 56 is a negative 56x. Now, again, I set, them, set, them both, set both expressions equal to 0 using the 0 product property. And then I can just simply go ahead and solve this. So therefore, I have x equals 56. OK, uh, so now in the next case, now they, both of my terms have a coefficient. One has a coefficient of 2, the other one has a coefficient of 4. So we want to look at, again, what is the common factor? We know they have x squared and x. And actually, for all these problems, you can see they all have x squared and x. So we know x is going to be a common factor. But what we're also looking for is, you know, what about the numbers? What is the common factor? What divides into 2 as well as divides into 4? Well, that's 2. So now I'm going to factor out a 2x. When factoring out a 2x, I'm left with an x plus 2 equals 0. So now I, again, set these both equal to 0. So I'll have 2x equal to 0, and x plus 2 equals 0. Well, here I can divide by 2, and I get x equals 0. Here I subtract 2, and I get x equals negative 2. I didn't write these as in the solution set, but um, I guess I could do that. OK, so now let's go and get to this one. This one, you might say, oh, it looks a little bit confusing here. Now the zero is on the left-hand side. It doesn't matter. It's just another way to rewrite it. Um, again, we want to look at the common factors. So we look at 16 and negative 4. We know that they're going to both have common x. We can factor out the x. And then you look at 16 and 4, and you can say, all right, well, 4 divides into both of those. So that's going to be my common factor. It would be 4x. So I do 0 equals 4x, which is going to leave me with a 4x minus 1. Okay. Now again, you have the product of two expressions equal to 0. Apply the 0 product property. Set them both equal to 0. So 4x equals 0 and 4x minus 1 equals 0. Again, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter if the 0 is on the left side or the right side. It's still going to work. So again, divide by 4, or you could just say x equals 0. Here, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And then I have 4x equals 1. Divide by 4 on both sides, and x equals 1 fourth. So my solution set is 0, comma, 1 fourth. Over here, you can see this is my one example. Um, 
where my variable is not, or all my variables are not on the same side. A big mistake students will do is they'll try to divide by 3 and then take the square root. And the problem is because your answer, if you solve for this x by taking the square root, that's fine. But then your answer has the square root as the, as the variable in it. And we can't solve for the solution of a value with having the variable in the, as the solution. So we got to get it to the same side. So I'm going to subtract the 3x on both sides. That obtains 3x squared minus 3x equals 0. Now I can factor. You notice that they both share a 3x. I can, so I'm going to divide out a 3x, or factor out a 3x, and that's going to leave me with an x minus 1 equals 0. Set them both equal to 0. 3x equals 0, and x minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, go ahead and solve, and I get x equals 0 and x equals 1. Just trying to uh, speed this up a little bit, 0 comma 1. All right, and for the last one, we have some fractions. So who likes dealing with fractions? Not me, right? So the best way to get rid of fractions, as long as you multiply the whole equation by a multiplier, you can get rid, you, you create equivalent equations. So the multiplier that you're going to want to choose is the multiplier that has the, that's going to have um, the common multiple of your denominators. Well, 2 and 4 have a common multiple of 4. So I'm going to multiply everything by 4. When I multiply 4 times 1 half, I'm left with a 2x squared. When I multiply 4 times 3 fourths, I'm left 3 fourths x, I'm left with a 3x. And then 4 times 0 is just equal to 0. Now here, 2 and 3, they don't have, they, I can't factor anything out in common between 2 and 3. So I can just factor out the x. So when factoring out the x, I'm left with a 2x plus 3 equals 0. Now use my zero product property, x equals 0 and 2x plus 3 equals 0. Then you just go ahead and use inverse operations and solve. So therefore, your solution set in this one is 0 comma negative 3 halves. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve a quadratic by factoring out the GCF with two terms. Thanks. Hello.